Um, Mitch, before we went to break, you said children are the anchor and the wings. What does that mean? Child is both an anchor and a set of wings. Yeah, well, I mean, an anchor in that suddenly your time is not your own, especially when you're in our late 50s when we were having our first child. All of a sudden you thought the day was full before, and now it's, I have to go potty. I need to throw up on you. I need to, you know. <laughs> and, and suddenly, you know, all of your time is spent there. But a set of wings for all the obvious reasons. I mean, what is more magnificent than watching the wonder of a child and the places that they take you or hearing her sing in the backseat, Doa deer, an email deer. And we would say, <laughs> no, it's female deer. And she'd say, no, it's my mouth. I can say what I want. <laughs> I mean, that's brilliant, you know? And you don't get that kind of logic from no. an adult, you know? Yeah, so that's so true. Yeah. You, I read a quote where you said, what we carry is what defines us. For so many years, I carried papers and books and accomplishments. Yeah. And then suddenly you had this change in your life. Well, uh, I wrote that in light of the fact that towards the end of Chica's uh, time with us, she couldn't walk anymore. That was part of the DIPG disease that she had. So I had to carry her. I was her transportation. She'd lift her arms and take her wherever I had to go. And one time we were sitting at a table coloring, and I looked at my watch. I realized I was late, and I popped up. I said, Chica, I got to go. She said, no, Mr. Mitch, stay in color. I said, Chica, this is, I have to work. And she said, Mr. Mitch, I have to play. And I said, <laughs> but it's not the same, Chica. This is my job. And she said, no, it's not. Your job is carrying me. Oh. And, uh, you know, after I laughed, I realized, boy, no truer words were ever spoken. Because, of course, my job was to carry her. It was the best job I ever had. And it's the best job all of us have to carry our children. And it's our responsibility to carry them. And if you have the opportunity, then carry the poor and the sick and the forgotten children of the world as we try to do with the orphanage that we have. But. And you do that with, um, my, 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 I'm crying, I can't, <laughs> I can't. I get I mean, that. Mitch, I'm looking at you and you know, we hear a loss, an unimaginable loss is that of a parent losing their child, to know that it's happening. Yeah, but you know, I tried very hard to write this book from a positive point yeah. of view. You know on the very first page yeah. what happens to her, but you also see that she's come back and she's talking to me and she's asking me questions just like she always did. Tell me about my life and tell me about what happened and tell me, you know, if you're going to write, write about me, you yeah. know, which is what, what yeah. she would do. And I conclude towards the end that, you know, there are many ways to make a family and we were obviously an unusual family, but there's no wrong way to make a family. Yeah. And no matter how a family comes together and no matter how it might come apart, you can't lose a child, Tamara. You can't lose a child. And we didn't lose a child. We were given a child. And that's the blessing, no matter how long you have them. Some people only have their babies for a couple of days. Some have them for five years. Some have them until they're 70 years old themselves. Whatever time you have, it's never going to be enough. But it's a gift every single day you get them. And I've tried to write the book from that perspective. You have. <laughs> I mean, you've given the world a beautiful gift um, in this book that I've been carrying around as well. And I know that you do so much for so many others, particularly in Detroit, your home. I was on Instagram Live saying you were going to be on. I think everybody in Detroit tweeted <laughs> me this morning. We're a close-knit community. <laughs> You're a close-knit small town of Detroit. Yeah. But you do so much uh, phil philanthropic work, um, multiple organizations in Detroit, and even continued work with the orphanage um, in Haiti, where yeah. you met Chica. Yeah, well, you know, in Haiti, and you see some of these kids, I mean, many of our kids have been abandoned. Uh, one, one, or, one or two have been left to die in the woods, and they were found. One was left at a tuberculosis center, and nobody ever came back for him for two years. Mm -hmm. And now they have a home. And I called the book Finding Chica because Chica loved, whenever you walked in, she always would throw a blanket over her and hide. And she'd make you go, where's Chica? Where's Chica? Where's Chica? And you'd see her, the thing shaking underneath. And then she'd throw it off and she'd say, there is he. Because, you know, English was her third yeah. language. But I realized, you know, she once asked us when my wife and I were putting her to bed, she said, how did you find me? And I thought it was such a sad question. I said, how did we find you? She said, I said, you mean how did you come to us? And she nodded. But I think when I thought about it, how do you find me is how many orphans feel. Because yeah. she can't remember her birth mother or where she came from. She knew she wasn't born at the orphanage. So it felt like she was found. And that's the best you can do for a child who feels lost is to give them that home. And so I called it Finding Chica because no child ever delighted more in being discovered. I'll tell you that. It is so beautiful, Mitch. Thank you so much.